Introduction to Asset Liability Maturity Matching. So maturity matching is an approach to risk management for financing companies. In it, long-term needs are financed with long-term capital, long-term capital being, of course, equity and long-term debt, and short-term needs are financed with short-term debt. Now, fixed assets are, by definition, long-term assets, so those we will finance with long-term capital. On the other hand, uh, working capital has two components. One of them is a long-term or permanent style of working capital because uh, this never falls for, for most of these companies, will not fall down to zero. And in that sense, it can be considered a longer term uh, requirement of capital. And there's a short term seasonal uh, level of working capital. Now, taking a look at it from a uh, balance sheet uh, point of view, the asset side of the balance sheet during the seasonal high will have, of course, the fixed assets, and we'll look at net working capital at the seasonal high point. Now, at a seasonal low point, that fall, the net working capital falls, the fixed assets remain the same, but the net working capital will fall uh, during the year, as it will tend to vary with uh, the business or seasonality of the business. So you could look at the uh, seasonal low networking mm -hmm. capital plus the fixed assets as the longer term financing needs or requirement. So on the liability side of the balance sheet, we're looking at financing those long term needs with uh, longer term capital, that being, of course, equity and long term debt. And the, uh, the short term seasonal requirements can be covered using short term debt. Now, looking at the networking capital itself, so let's take a look at the graph of networking capital needs. This is a an example. So we're looking at it on a quarterly basis, and you can see from one quarter to the next, you'll see a seasonality here, a certain pattern, and then there should be a trend usually that goes year to year. So the low periods would represent the permanent working capital needs that we would cover with long-term financing as shown in the previous slide, and that would be how we would cover those. And then, of course, that would leave us with the remainder which needs to be financed, and that would be the short-term financing. Aside from matching just the volume of long-term financing with the long-term assets, uh, companies will generally want to uh, match the duration of those assets and the liabilities. How do we do that? Well, let's take a look at an asset that's worth $100,000 and an expected life of 10 years and no salvage value. How do we be able to ascertain what is the remaining expected life based on, on values we can see on the balance sheet? Well, the depreciation of the asset in this example would be $10,000 a year, so that over 10 years we're down to zero. And let's take an example of two years into the life of this asset. So there are eight years left. Well, then the uh, net asset value would be 100,000 minus two years of accumulated depreciation of 10,000 a year. And that would mean we'd have 80,000 as the uh, net asset value. So we could calculate the remaining life of the asset by taking the net asset value and then dividing that by the, remain, uh, the annual depreciation. That would give us eight years. Continuing with this example, let's assume the debt that we're using to finance this asset, uh, which has still eight years uh, remaining life duration, is uh, two years instead of the eight years. Well, the risk then on the debt side is that to finance this asset, you'd need to roll over this debt. This means you'd have to uh, incur a potential interest rate risk because when the, in two years, when the new debt comes along, the, the interest rates could be different. And of course, there's also sometimes liquidity risk. In fact, liquidity risk means the capacity of being able to finance it in the first place. And on occasions, particularly during stresses in uh, the financial system, this can become significant even for companies that are otherwise quite solvent. And we've seen that and experienced that quite recently now with the pandemic. In fact, just a selection of type of highlights here. 
as you can see, you can see the rates, how they shot up very quickly. And all over the world, people were wondering what's going to happen. And uh, banks needed to respond to that. And they, the central banks, because if they didn't, then there would have been a uh, huge stress on all of these, uh, all of the entire system, not just banks, but also the rest of the economy. So the question then is, why would companies tend to keep lower durations for their liabilities than they do for their uh, fixed assets? And this is commonly the case. Well, the answer is in the fact that their interest costs are lower. Generally speaking, uh, the, when you look at the cost of borrowing over a longer period of time, it will cost more than if you uh, borrow for a short period of time and then roll it over. Here are some examples of the U.S. Treasury yield curve. Um, as recently, you can see how it changes over time as well. But in general, the longer interest rates here are more expensive than the shorter term interest rates. So how do we calculate the duration of long-term debt? For example, let's say you have 1.5 million of long-term debt and the payment schedule is as follows. So we have years one to five, and then we have the amounts that are due in those years for a total of 1.5 million. Well, we calculate this duration. We start then by saying it's, or by realizing it's a weighted average mm -hmm. and what we need to do is to figure out what the weighted average is of this. This is, can be done. You simply multiply the amount of uh, that is due by the time. So here we have year one. So one year in 150,000, that means we have 150,000 in the first year or the equivalent of uh, dollars times years. So in the case of the second year, we have two times 300,000, that gives us 600,000. And we continue with the remainder. So three times 500,000, four times 450,000, and finally five times 100,000. We can sum that up. And then the average duration is simply the amount that would yield the appropriate uh, duration times time for the, for the sum we made. So in this case, we'd have uh, one and a half million times the uh, average duration would yield 4.55 million. So to calculate the duration, we take the 4.55 million and then divide it by the uh, total amount due, and that gives us just a tick over three years. And that is the duration of our debt. Thank you for your attention, and I hope that helped.